and we need to get into the real world and actually do the scary thing of interacting with people who don't believe what we believe. Absolutely. Yeah, because you, you, you lose that. You just start getting scared. I mean, so many of these guys uh, coming out of high school have spent the last four years sharing their faith with their friends and everything else, and then suddenly they're put in an environment where it's all believers. And, I, I, you know, someone once said that, you know, Christians are like manure. Uh, you, you leave them all in one pile and, and it stinks, but if you spread it out... <laughs> It makes things grow, you know? It's, it's, it's meant to be like distributed. Your wife, Lisa, is here with yes. us tonight. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there's a special song, song that she's going to sing, and I know there's a story behind the song. Yeah, this is so cool because when I, when I, when I wanted her to sing this song tonight, I didn't even realize, okay, this, it's about her grandmother. Mm. Her grandmother is one of those few people who just loved Jesus, like just in love, madly in love. Like, I can't wait to talk to him every morning. Every time you called her, Grandma Claire, what are you doing? She's like, oh, just talking to Jesus. You know, just always, like she just couldn't wait to die and, uh, and, and, and be with him. And, and it was like for a long time, I was like, you know, she got weaker and weaker. You know, I, I kind of wanted her, you know, I felt bad. Like she still wants to be with you, Jesus. And then she finally passed away. And I, I was just thinking, gosh, she's got to be so excited because she so was in love with him. And I know a lot of people that know a lot about Jesus, but someone who just madly in love with him. And uh, I just thought, what is it like for her? She just saw him. She finally saw him. Well, she died two years ago tonight. Wow. And uh, exactly. Wow. And uh, and after she died, like Lisa woke up at night and she couldn't sleep and these words just came to her and she wrote this song about her grandmother seeing Jesus in that moment when we see Jesus. And so that's what she's going to sing right now. Francis wrote a book called Crazy Love. And uh, it, it, it's kind of a different title for a, for a book, Crazy Love. And I wanted to explain to you what the meaning of the whole book is all about. You know, when you think about the love of God, I mean, to think that there's this almighty being sitting on his throne right now mm. with lightning and thunder and fire and a hundred million angels worshiping him and the thought of him, that God, sending his son down to die on a cross for us. I mean, we've heard the story so much that it, it can become common. I, I hope it never does, but it, it can become that when we forget, wait, that's insane. I believe that God Almighty, the one who created this whole world, went through that for me. Uh, that, that's an insane, crazy, you know, type of love. And so our response to that shouldn't be, oh, you know, I'll go to church and give 10% of my income and try not to swear too much. You know, it doesn't, right. it doesn't make sense. Right. I, I mean, I should give like an insane, crazy love back to him. And that's mm. what the book's about, you know. <laughs> You say on the back of the book, uh, Crazy Love, it says, uh, the answer to a, a, spir a spiritually dead life is not trying harder at a list of religious do's and don'ts, yeah. but falling in love with God. Yeah. So when you say crazy love, yeah. root that in Scripture for me. Oh, gosh, it's, it's, it's all about the Scriptures. Well, wh where that is solved is, is you look at the way God is described in Scripture. I mean, we're, we're talking about a holy, holy, holy being. I'm dependent on him right now to take another breath. He determines whether I live through this day. And so that's not, you know, this uh, just, <laughs> he's not this cuddly little being I stick in my pocket and pull him out when I'm in the, I, I recognize, wow, I, I wouldn't be breathing without him. Uh, this is the God of the universe, and we have to start with a fear of the Lord. Mm. You know, that, that's the beginning of, beginning of wisdom, the Bible right. says. And I, I'm, I'm really concerned with the way that we, we teach the gospel nowadays, which I, I even question if it's really the gospel. And so many people are, are saying, Not the well, way you preach the gospel. Use it, we <laughs> meaning so much of the church. Yeah, so much of the American church is, is, you know, hey, if you follow Jesus, you can have this. You know, if you follow Jesus, right. he'll give you this. You know, and you go, oh, well, I'll follow follow Jesus if I can have that, or I'll follow Jesus. That's not, that's not what it says here. This book is about, I will follow Jesus. No. This is all about, I'll follow Jesus even if, even if I lose everything, I'm going to keep following him.
because <laughs> it's this idea of he's a treasure so great that if I lose, if I lose, you know, God forbid I lose my wife, my kids, my home, my everything, he's still worth it. If I'm, yeah, I'm right. beaten, I'm, 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 you know, if I have to be crucified, when he's that great that he's worth it. And, I, and that's not the gospel we're teaching. We're teaching, hey, maybe Jesus and this. Now will you take him? And it's like, wow, that's, that's not the way Jesus taught. Jesus saw himself as a great, great, wonderful God. And he says, look, you got to deny your father, mother, wife, kids. You, you, you pick up your cross and follow me. And yet you look at him and you go, he's worth it. He's worth it. He is so worth it. He's worth everything, sacrificing everything for. Okay. And, and, and what do you say to the guy who says, well, I'm glad Jesus is working for you, but, you know, I got my beer, I got my girlfriend, I, I'm pulling in the money. Life is great. I don't need you, Jesus. Yeah. I don't need to fall in love with him. Yeah. Well, you, you know, here's the thing is you lay it out. You explain that there is a, an eternity. There is a future. This That's is right. not what life is all about. Our, the life on earth is a vapor. Everyone knows that. We've all had loved ones right. that are just gone right now, and, and it's about eternity, and God's placed that in our hearts. Everyone knows that, and, and we do have to face this judge one day. And I know you share a lot about that. I mean, and praise God for that ministry and the way of the Master. I mean, just explaining that, look, we're a sinner, and we're going to stand before God one day. But the truth is, is I, I, I grew up in a generation that begged everyone, like, oh, please, 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 please follow Won't Jesus. You try Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll, we'll, you know, keep coming. We'll, we'll have free skateboards at church, and you know, That's and whatever. Right. Just please, please come. Jesus wasn't that way. He says, Ever. you know, if you got ears to hear, you know, hear. But if you want to follow me, we might not have a place to sleep tonight. Do you think I'm great enough, you know, to where you'll sleep on the ground, you know, and not know That's where right. your food's going to come? Because I'm that great. And people are going, you know what? I want to follow that Jesus. He's worth it to me. So, so, so help me out. If, if I'm feeling like, Francis, I wish I had your passion. I wish I had your zeal. Yeah. You, you're all fired up about, about the Lord. I've been going to church for 10 years, 20 years, yeah. and, and I just don't feel it anymore. Mm. How do I fire that up again? Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because our faith is a gift from God. Mm. You know, so if we have faith, God gives you that faith. And it's a strange thing because... I have to ask God and say, God, help me love you more. There are times when I say, God, I, I, I need you because I'm, I'm, I'm dead in my trespasses and sins, you know, I, for my salvation. I need your Holy Spirit to come into me. And then in everyday life, I need him to give me these affections for him, which is weird because I don't, I don't go to my wife and go, I don't love you a whole lot. So uh, help me, help me love you. <laughs> you. You know, that's like a foreign, you know, <laughs> that's, that's not something you do no, with a person. That wouldn't, that wouldn't yeah, go that doesn't well. really go well. Um, but you, but with God, that, that's, that's the way it happens. You really do say, Lord, because we have to be honest and say, Lord, right now, I love golf more than you. I love surfing more than you. I love play, whatever it is. And God, I don't want to be that way because I know you're a treasure greater than everything. Right. And so remind me of the truth of your word. Open up his word and then say, God, I, I want to love you with all of my heart, soul, mind, everything. And so help me with that, God, because I want you to be first and foremost. And then he puts that love in our hearts. And That's he right. gets all the glory. Because then at the end, we, he, I didn't do it. It's like, God, you gave me this love for you. You did everything for me. And I'm just going to be praising him for all of eternity, for everything he did for me. And you went through every single book in the Bible and showed how suffering, suffering, suffering characterizes a Christian. What was that all about? Well, it was amazing because I was preaching Philippians 3 one week and where it says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And, and I talked about how we like the first part. I want to know him. We, we like the second part. I want to know his power, the power of the resurrection. Right. But then it goes, and the fellowship of his sufferings. We kind of go, well, I don't know about that part. You know, or becoming like him in his death. And, and then the next week I was explaining to people, look, I'm not taking one obscure verse on suffering. And I went through every New Testament book and go, look, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Jesus explained that anyone, anyone, uh, Paul tells Timothy, anyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 
we are going to suffer. Philippians 1.29, it's granted for us not just to believe in him, but to suffer for his sake. And the thing is, we got to remember that it's all worth it in the end. That's right. Whatever little suffering I, I put up with on this earth, I'm going to re be rewarded a hundredfold. And <laughs> we've got to stop preaching this gospel that says you can add Jesus to your life. What the gospel teaches is you lose your life. That's right. And then you find it. You sacrifice everything, and Jesus says, I offer you something better. And if you try to hold on to that old life, you try to save it, you're going to lose it. And he goes, what's it going to profit you to gain the whole world and forfeit your soul? That's right. Yeah.